So as a continuation to the previous question, we'd already done Oizerga, and we saw that if we take if we take f equals kx, which is Hooke's law, and k then equals f over x, we saw that the gradient of this graph was x over f. And so this is one of the valuable reasons for doing Oizerga in the first place, is it allows us to find out all kinds of things um, ahead of time. So question two, the spring constant is given by 1 over the gradient of the graph. 1 over the gradient of the, of the graph. And W over L and L over W, that's not the case. It's the slope that gives us that. And maybe we could consider one of these if they were delta L over delta W or delta W over delta L, but that's not what they're asking. And in fact, W over L will not give a constant value. They do not yield a constant value. And of course, that disagrees with the idea of a spring's constant altogether. <laughs> All right, so that idea of the spring constant. Now, just to take a little extension on this, if we were to draw this graph and flip the axes so that the weight or the force were on the vertical and x <clears throat> were on the horizontal, as we'd come to expect, then this y-intercept becomes an x-intercept. And we are looking at this. And so then we could see then that the area under this graph would be here, which was area Z from the previous question. That's area Z. And then the slope of that graph would give us, if F equals KX and we want K to be F over X, then we could see the slope of that line would be delta F over delta X, which give, would give us the spring constant. So it's not the gradient of that graph, it's the inverse of that gradient of the graph, and the just the straight dividing the axes, um, the correct, they might be the correct units, but they're not going to give us a constant value that we'd expect to see in a slope.